how nice of you to join us here. Listen, I think I got something. You need a dermatologist? Don't tell me. I'll get it. Uh, George Raft, right? Where the hell have you been? I have to talk to you. I think I'm on to something. It could be your actual ball game. I mean it. Golly gee, Scoop, that sounds very interesting. Something's wrong. Something big. They know I'm on to it, and they try to kill me. Who's they? I can't tell you. Why not? You wouldn't believe me. You don't think so? OK, listen to me. I got a tip from a friend, a good friend. Then he disappeared. He disappeared? Like he never existed. There's some lady living in his apartment. His apartment is all different. She said she's been living there for more than a year. I checked the building rental office. They have receipts from her for more than a year. I checked NASA personnel. They have no record that my friend ever worked there. They say they never even heard of him. So this friend of yours who works at NASA gives you a tip and then he disappears. And it turns out that he never lived in his apartment. He never worked at NASA. And this is the guy that gave you the tip on your cosmic scoop, and you think I won't believe you? My car. Someone tampered with my car. The one you decided to go swimming with? They did something to it. I couldn't stop it. Can you prove that? Oh, the police said, uh, they said that nothing was wrong. And you think I won't believe you? Somebody took a shot at me. When? Yesterday. Thank God I've got an alibi. I'm telling you the truth. Listen to me. And listen good. I don't like you, Caulfield. You're ambitious. You think the way to get ahead is to come up with a scoop of the century. Woodward and Bernstein were good reporters. That's how they did it. Not by telling me they've located Patty Hearst three times like you did. Or that brilliant piece of investigative journalism you pulled off by finding an eyewitness to the second gunman in the Kennedy assassination. The small fact that the man had been in a mental institution at the time never deterred you, not Scoop Caulfield. Well, most reporters are like me. They are plotters. They spend a lot of their time checking little things, like facts. They cover mundane stories like wars and trials and hearings. You never seem to have enough time in your busy schedule to stoop so low as to cover a story. You occupy your time with tips from people who never existed, driving your car into water and then claiming it wasn't your fault, getting shot at by unseen gunmen. Now, I really hate to interrupt your meteoric career with something so plebeian as a legitimate story. However, a trainload of propane gas had the bad taste to derail near Galveston, and there's a whole town that just might blow up. So it would be just really peachy of you if you would join your film crew that's waiting for you on the plane at this very moment while we speak. That was some speech. I thought so.